Now, before starting the video, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this video keys fan. Keysfan.com offers cheap and legal OEM software keys in a simple and reliable way. You can quickly activate software like Windows and Microsoft Office using these 100% official keys, which are fully compatible with online activation. Moreover, they provide lifetime after-sales support along with 24 by 7 customer service. Right now, their software super deals are live, so don't miss out. Upgrade your software at unbeatable prices with Keysfan. Simply add the product you need to your cart and catch 50% discount for Windows Series with RTG50. 62% discount for Microsoft Office and bundles with RTG62. Don't forget to check the description for more details. What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, the official version of the RPCS3 emulator has finally been released for Android devices. This means you can now emulate PS3 games directly on your phone, running natively on Android. In this video, I'm going to set up and test this on both Snapdragon and Mali devices. Currently, it's in a pre-release beta stage specifically, the Alpha 3 version, so it's still in development. In this update, they've made some fixes and changes in the logs, including improvements to graphical issues. On the Assets section, simply download and install the package. Once that's done, you'll also need to download one more file for the emulator, the PS3 firmware. The latest version, 4.92, was recently released and helps improve overall system performance. To get it, select Update using a computer. Download the PS3 update file. Once the download is complete, I'll go ahead and close the browser. All right, so this is the RPCS3 emulator with its new official icon. Now, let's head into its app settings. Go to the battery settings and set it to no restrictions to ensure optimal performance. All right, now open the RPCS3 emulator and grant the necessary permissions. The interface looks clean and setting it up is pretty straightforward. At the top, tap on Options and import the PS3 update file we downloaded earlier. Select the file and the firmware installation will begin. As you can see, the emulator detects firmware version 4.92. The process will take some time, typically around three to five minutes, depending on your device's performance. Once it's done, you'll see the PS3 Home icon, which confirms a successful installation. In future updates, if you need to update the firmware, simply tap on Firmware, select the new file, and update it just like before. Now, there's an Add icon to import PS3 game ROMs. But before that, let's go to the File Manager and the files which I got in here. The game ROM file will be in a compressed zip format, so you'll need to extract it. Once extracted, the ROM will be in a .pkg package format, which you can import directly into the emulator. Alternatively, games may come in a disk ISO decrypted format, but currently, the Android version of RPCS3 only supports the PKG package format. Also, keep in mind that not all games will work. All right, as usual, tap on the Add icon and import the game ROM file. I'll also import a couple of other ROM files here. As you can see, the ROM packages are starting to install. Keep in mind that this app still has bugs and it may crash multiple times during the process. Once the installation is complete, open the game. Here, I'm testing God of War 3. The first time you launch it, the emulator will compile PPU modules, SPU cache, and other necessary files. However, when I tried loading it again, it got stuck on the progress screen. Let's try reloading it. Same error. I also ran into this issue on my Galaxy S24 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, so this might be a common issue on Snapdragon devices. Let's enable the Performance Boost option and try again. But unfortunately, the same problem persists. The game still won't boot. Hope they will soon fix this issue. Right now, I'm using my Galaxy device with the Exynos 1380 processor, which is roughly equivalent to MediaTek's Dimensity 7300. It features a Mali G68 GPU on the latest driver architecture and comes with 6 gigs of RAM. All right, I've already set up the emulator and imported the ROMs on this device. Let's start by testing Naruto Shippuden. All right, it's loaded. At the top, you can see the FPS meter and CPU usage stats. And surprisingly, it's running on the Mali GPU without issues. It looks like the emulator is directly utilizing shader cores to compile everything. And check this out. No frame drops, no lag, 
and we're actually getting a stable 25 to 30 FPS. That's impressive. They've clearly fixed a lot of graphical issues. Now, let's see if GTA 5 works. Well, it's not booting at all, just a blank screen. But honestly, I think it might be possible in future updates. I'm also importing a few more ROM files to test. And look at this, it's running insanely well. Hopefully, with more optimizations, this emulator will even work on lower-end chips like the Helio G99 or better. I'll also test this soon on my 7-year-older Mali device with just 4 gigs of RAM. Well, some games still aren't booting, but hopefully they'll fix these issues in future updates. Alright, that's it for my testing of the RPCS3 emulator on Android. While some games run well, especially on Mali GPUs, Snapdragon devices seem to have issues with certain titles not booting. The emulator is still in early development, so bugs, crashes, and compatibility issues are expected. Let me know which game you want me to test next. If you found this video helpful, Drop a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.